the last that I have is Schminka. So I was my uh, my my um point for this <laughs> was to um get just a few. I, I really, after all my research, had decided on Sennelier uh, for the, the set that I was going to get. and But I wanted to try the Schmincke, and so I decided just to get a, a few of them that would mix, just a basic um, palette for mixing. Um, but then my friend, uh, Bart, he got some more Schmincke, and so was kind enough to share uh, what he ended up getting. <laughs> so I have more Schmincke than I was expecting. Uh, this first color is a pure yellow, which is beautiful. Beautiful. Again, I'm not a huge fan of, of yellow, but that yellow is beautiful. The next one is a Perlin, uh red. Again, I've not seen a Perlin red, I don't think, and I am really falling for those colors. It's a very bright red. Pull that down. The next is a Perlin maroon. These, I have seen more maroons. I have, oh, look at that, that's gorgeous. This, I will say that the Schmincke does move. I've heard it sh Schmincke doesn't move a lot, or maybe not as much as um, Sennelier, but that, that one does. The next one is a Potter's Pink. Now, this is interesting because I had a Potter's Pink from Daniel Smith, and I don't know if it, if it was a bad batch I'm kind of thinking because people raved about it. Look how beautiful and interesting that is. My Potter's Pink was very difficult to re-wet and when I did re-wet it, it was very strange and it bubbled up. It like foam, it was like bubbly. It was very strange. That's beautiful. I would definitely use that. Uh, the next color is a purple something. I can't read my own handwriting. Surprise, surprise. Purple magenta, yeah. Purple magenta. It's a very Sennelier color, very botanical-y color. Very almost opera pinky uh, color. The next one is a cobalt violet. Now this I think is the one that I had such an ugly one and it was a hue and it didn't look anything like this color. <laughs> yes. I think that is exactly what this is. Pull some of that down. Now see that the water wanted to go up versus the pigment wanting to go down and that is something I think I have seen uh, read about with Schmincke. It might be only some Schmincke's but where when you add water the water see the water invades the pigment versus the pigment dropping down into the water if that makes sense pushing into the water. Next is a Perillon Violet yeah, see, the Perlin colors uh, are just gorgeous. Look at that. Yeah, you can definitely see it wanting to backpedal versus come into the water. It's just interesting. So you're going to get probably more like these sort of blooms going on, which again, some people might want, and so then that's a good thing. The next is a French ultramarine. Definitely less, you know, these are definitely less, yeah, this, it's really interesting how the water does that. I'll have to do it on another piece of paper and try to show. Let's just try that while we're right here. 
So when I take some of this French ultramarine and I add or introduce water, it wants to back up. Now I can get it to pull down, but its initial reaction is to want to pull up. Let's see. Here is a, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Here's a Sennelier, it's not French ultramarine, I don't think, but you know, close enough. So when you put water, see how the, the pigment drops down. Uh, I don't, it's just, it, it's desire is for the pigment to overtake the water where you get a lot of back running up into the, the water running into the pigment on the Schmincke, uh, which is really, it can make strange and kind of probably cool effects, but you definitely need to be aware of what it's doing. I'm going to have to put some more in here. see the pigment. <laughs> and the extra, the next one I think is just an ultramarine. So you know you can use that effect as anything if you're if you know the paints that you're working with you can use that effect to your advantage when you're wanting it to do that when you're wanting to make backgrounds when you're wanting to make blooms you can use that as a beautiful ultramarine color. Cobalt. Very, very soft uh, cobalt here, which would be a beautiful sky. Yeah, that's really interesting how it does that. That would make a beautiful sky. I mean, Schmincke is beautiful paints. Um, it's just it's what you want out of your paint and what you how you want oops how you want it to behave that's important right this seems like this must have white in it but it's beautiful now this I have it so you maybe want to keep it tipped down uh, if you want to mitigate some of that. I have too many things on my table. So this is, if you're looking for a professional <laughs> swatching, you want to go and visit somebody else. This is a cobalt green. I'm actually gonna turn this around so that I can get the lighter over the top of the text. Now that, didn't do it as much for sure. Next is a, I think this is the Perlin Green, which I was excited to see. Oof, look at that. The Perlins are so intense. So, oops, now I've just sucked in some green from next door. <laughs> um, whoops. That's beautiful. That's, that really reminds me. Obviously, that has now invaded it. Um, so I'm going to have to uh, go back in and uh, probably add some more. But it reminds me of the Holbein um, shadow a little bit, but a little bit more vibrant. But that's gorgeous. I love that. The next one is a... Uh, oh, a raw, is this a raw umber? I think this is a raw umber. Again, really bad when you can't see your own handwriting. Or green umber, could that be? I probably have it written on the side. I'll have to look a little closely. Ooh, I like that. I mean, raw umbers have a sort of green tone to them anyways. I like that. Green umber and burnt umber, maybe? I don't, I have no clue. Let's see. I 
Oh, I just put the color number. So I'll have to look that up. Yeah, this has got to be a burnt, so raw and burnt umber, I'm guessing. Beautiful. And then the last one is a very strange ochre that just dried really strange in the pan. I've had a sapia do that, and it's a very gold ochre. Almost, uh, you know, kind of running between uh, almost like a quinacridone gold base color. It's pretty, though. Okay. So there we have the... Um, so very interesting. I I'm going to definitely play around with uh, the schminka a little bit more to see how it acts like... A, you know actually usage and this paint is so or this water is so bad I'm just gonna get some water here I mean it definitely moves let's put some Yeah, I mean, it definitely moves when you put it on paint on paper. So, it'll be interesting. I, I love to see what paint does, you know, when you... It's very vibrant. You can get it quite vibrant. That feels like that's got some white in it, if I had to guess, but I'm not positive. Obviously, I am not a expert. So we'll see. I will do some more work with it and actually um, painting with it uh, and see what we have to see here. But I'm excited to try it because, again, it's interesting to see how different paints are, uh, how a different they react to water, how differently they move in water. Uh, it's re it really is one of those things that uh, you, you do. I don't, not that I suggest buying tons of every single brand, but getting like a mixing set, because you can get a yellow, get a blue, get a red, get a green even as a convenience, and get a, you know, um, you know, well, you could just get three. Just get red, yellow, and blue of, of different uh, paint companies to try out and really get a feel with how they work and how that might work for you. I'm really loving this Potter's Pink uh, as it dries. Uh, I love the granulation here. I like this French uh, Ultramarine a lot as well. And even this Cobalt Blue is really beautiful. This is very flat. Almost feels like there is some white in there. Uh, so it's interesting just to see. I actually quite like that ochre um, as it dries. So it's interesting. I'm going to definitely be playing with these uh, and hopefully you enjoyed this little bit of chaos.